Welcome to Module 5 of ORT5MES, Part 4, Service Delivery Models. The ability of healthcare systems to provide safe, high-quality, effective and patient-centred services depends on sufficient, well-motivated and appropriately skilled personnel that operate within service delivery models that optimise their performance. This definition is one that's been provided by uh, Dubois and Singh as it's shown there on the PowerPoint. So let's consider in a bit more detail with task one how models of care are defined and for this you need to access the paper by Davidson and others and um, have a think about that question. Um, I want you to make a note though that nursing models is a term in the paper that's only used for nurses. So in relation to this module, let's consider a service delivery model or model of care as a care pathway. All care pathways in secondary and tertiary health begin with a referral which is received and then triaged. Triaging is a process that's undertaken to determine the urgency for care and also to, to, to determine the appropriate clinic or service that the patient needs. So in some instances, the triage process will lead to the determination that the patient doesn't actually require the services provided by either the hospital or the clinic um, that they've been referred to, in which case the patient and or the referring clinician are informed. The figure here shows you roughly how it works. So a referral comes in, as in referral received. The referral is triaged, a decision is made, um, about the urgency of care and the type of clinic and then the patient is given the appropriate appointment according to triage or if they've been referred wrongly the referrer is informed. Triaging of patients is actually conducted by various professionals and it actually will often depend on workforce capacity as to who is the professional that does that. So for example, you might actually find orthoptists, clinical coordinators, nurses, registrars, or even ophthalmologists triaging referrals in your clinic. Generally, those involved in triage work work to a protocol and they categorize the referral according to that protocol. So let's consider task two. The flow chart I showed you previously about the care pathway can really be uh, an oversimplification, oversimplification of the triage process. And you'll see that pathway there in the bottom right hand corner. What I want you to do is review the document, the Nottingham City Referral Pathway for Ophthalmology Triage and consider how many steps are involved in the triage process prior to the patient being seen by a clinician. It's noteworthy to mention that the triage process is an important part of the care pathway as if the patient, because if the patient is incorrectly triaged, issues can arise in terms of their care. For example, if a patient requires urgent care but was actually given an appointment in six months' time, the patient's condition could have progressed and they have then missed out on the necessary early treatment. Inappropriate triage can also lead to unnecessary appointments for the patient if they're given an, a, an appointment when they probably didn't really need one. So it can kind of work both ways. Once a patient's referral is triaged according to urgency, they then need to be booked into the appropriate clinic. So let's consider a patient diagnosed with diabetes. Traditionally, this patient would be booked to see an ophthalmologist, in which case the model of care, as an example, um, would be shown in this flow chart. However, there are various models of care for diabetic patients needing a review of their ocular health. The next slide is going to show you an example of an orthoptist-led clinic where the orthoptist assesses and manages the patient. But generally, um, this is traditionally how it would have worked. The referral is received, the patient diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, they are booked into a general eye clinic, 
the patient is reviewed by the orthoptist and ophthalmologist, and then the patient is managed by the ophthalmologist. So as I said to you in the next slide, you'll see a slightly different example of the orthoptist-led clinic in this type of patient management. So here's the example of an orthoptist-led clinic where the orthoptist assesses and manages the patient. So you get a referral of a patient diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. The patient is booked into the orthoptic diabetic retinopathy screening clinic. The patient sees the orthoptist only. There's no ophthalmology consultation. The patient is reviewed and managed by the orthoptist. And this management is based on a specific protocol. For example, the NH and MRC guidelines or a specific departmental protocol. And then the patient is referred to an ophthalmologist. And again, that's based on this particular protocol that's in place for that clinic. For task three, I'd like you to reflect on the two alternative models of care for diabetic patients and answer the following questions. One, how do these models differ? Two, what are the potential drivers for such a model of care in the previous figure? How does the model of care in that figure create greater efficiency? And in this figure, I'm talking about the alternate model of care um, for the orthoptic led clinic. Four, would you consider the model of care to be more cost effective? Explain. And would the latter model of care be as effective if legislation did not allow orthoptists to prescribe glasses? Explain that. And six, what processes would need to be in place to ensure that the quality of care is maintained despite a non-medical practitioner now delivering part of a service that was once delivered by medical practitioners? Your next task, task four, is to reflect on the following. Given the above or previous example um, of models of eye care for diabetic patients, consider how orthoptist skills may be better utilised in developing innovative models of care for other conditions such as glaucoma or cataract. Let's now consider shared care. Um, another term that we sometimes use in discussing various server, service delivery models is shared care. This generally refers to care pathways which involve a multidisciplinary team. So for example, an ophthalmologist and an orthoptist. And the care of the patient is shared between the medical and the non-medical staff. The non-medical staff may require an advanced scope of practice to become a part of the shared care team. Shared care can actually occur within one practice or hospital and for example the ophthalmologist refers the patient to an orthoptic clinic for the orthoptist to manage until they require an ophthalmology review or it could happen outside of the practice or hospital. So for example the ophthalmologist refers the patient to an optometrist to manage the patient until the next ophthalmology review. Your final task for part four is to read the Hutchings commentary on shared care in glaucoma um, for a perspective on this type of service delivery model. What are Hutchings' views on shared care in glaucoma care? So where are we at? We've just looked at service delivery models and understanding how they work. The next thing is we're going to evaluate those.